We just welcome you here. Uh, Bill Calvin, are you ready? Okay. So, uh, yeah. so we bless God for his goodness today, and we thank him for everything that he's done. Good morning, everyone, and um, <clears throat> it's good to see everyone this morning. And we don't have our Facebook family online yet. Are we, are we good? We're good. Okay. Well, we want to welcome our Facebook family, those that continue to join. I'm pretty sure my mom is joining and our other family and friends that watch from week to week. And we couldn't do this without you and your prayers. And we thank all the, the members and the visitors that are here. Um, so once you come uh, one time, you are part of your family. So if you're here for the first time in service or online, you are now a part of the family and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> and so I was sitting there thinking and they would start talking about back to school and I know someone else in here is, is, is when, she, when they heard that is like going back so we will we'll be going back with the kids and the kids will be coming back next month I know for us next month and um, for other districts they'll be going I believe in maybe in September but at least when we start hearing uh, back to school and after I told my husband after they pop those firecrackers I said we they're gonna start getting ready to go back to school he didn't believe me we went to Walmart last week and I said see all these school supplies I told you they are getting ready to, they did they did they sending us a live message the parents are ready to send them back to us and so um, I'm, I'm excited about about this school year and I'm, I know that the other educators are excited about this school year too and pray for us pray for our principals and for the, the administration in every district and all of the students and the bus drivers and the counselors and the nurses and the, the people that cook the food and the police officers and the cross, crossing guards and the, even the parents pray for them mm -hmm. so um, that this will be a, a good year this year and mm -hmm. have a blessed week mm -hmm. honor God for all of that and we know that God is a, is a good God also we will have camp meeting in Hallisville this week and so looking forward to that so we will not have Bible study Wednesday night so we'll start up the following Wednesday and so uh, we will not have Bible study on Zoom on this Wednesday um, hope that we can join the camp meeting in Hallisville. First Lady and I will be there later in the week. Um, of course, you know, I'm still working, of course, and so, but I will be there this weekend. I'm looking forward to what God is going to do in camp meeting this year. Make sure you register. Make sure you, you can do it online. Um, if you can't be there, it will be on YouTube. So uh, look for the camp meeting to be on YouTube. Um, T-S-A-C-O-G on the YouTube channel. So if you, if you can't make it to the service, uh, in person, just look for the uh, TSA COG on YouTube, and that way you can watch it. Um, and I'm sure it'll also be on the Facebook page as well, on the Texas State Association page, uh, Facebook page. So, looking forward to camp meeting this year. Continue to, uh, to pray for the meeting, the success of the meeting. I also remember all the saints who are traveling uh, for camp meetings around the country. This weekend, there's camps in uh, Louisiana and South Carolina, and I'm sure uh, the saints will be traveling home today. It was always good memories for me growing up in the church, going to campgrounds. And so, we know all the saints who will be traveling back as well. And God will bless them all in Jesus' name. So, um, all hearts are clear. Uh, it's time to pray to see you come on a new song. Life was the word.
have it today, find your healing in Jesus. Because I want you to know that sometimes uh, what I need is not what you need. And sometimes you need something that I don't need. But I want you to find your healing in Jesus Christ. And in this text we see this, man, this blind man, he ended up finding his healing in Jesus Christ. And so many times we describe healing as just being healed from being sick. No. Cold or flu or, you know, and then it gets worse, you know, arthritis or cancer or some other dreaded disease. But I want you to know whatever healing you need, you can find it in Jesus Christ. Your physical healing, your emotional healing. In our society today, there's so much need for emotional healing, baby. Because people have suffered trauma, baby. And some of us have hidden our trauma so deep in our lives because a spiritual healing that we need. Help me, Holy Ghost. We also need a social healing because our society is seen to be going backwards today. And we need the healing hands of Jesus <laughs> to move in our midst. To know that Jesus is in the healing business. We read that scripture so often uh, that Jesus, uh, he, he was wounded for our transgressions. But I, and, and bruised for our iniquities. I want you today to believe that Jesus, you can find your healing in Jesus Christ. So there are several things in this text today that I want to reflect on that we consider. We can find you can find your healing in Jesus Christ. Look at Mark chapter 8 today, beginning at verse 22. The first thing I want to say is find friends who have faith. We surround ourselves with the right kind of friends. In this text, we see this blind man, and I, and I never really paid attention to this before, but the text says, then he came to Bethsaida, and they <laughs> brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. I want you to see in the text today that there are times in our lives when we may not believe. Help me, Holy Ghost. We may have gone through so many burdens and so many trials that we can't even see what our future could be. But we need some friends <laughs> who have faith. Amen? And this, and this text said to me, uh, there are times in our lives we need to have some friends who will say, you know what? We need to get up from where you are and let's go and, and, and take your burdens to the Lord. Because he's the one who can help you when you're not even willing to help yourself. Amen? And the right friends will get you in the right place so you can have the thing that you really need in life. So today I want us to find friends uh, who have faith. And the text says, then they came to Bethsaida and they brought a blind man to him and begged him uh, to touch him. You see that word him in the text? <laughs> see, whenever you see something repeated, you need to pay attention to it. Amen? See, I want you to realize that your healing is in Jesus Christ today. It, it doesn't name the blind man, but you can put your name in there today. Amen? Whatever healing you need, you need to take your burdens to the Lord. They, came, they, they took this blind man to Jesus, and they begged him <laughs> to heal him. Amen? So I want you to be, be able to know today that it's all right to have some good friends. And I, I want to say to somebody listening today that the best place to find good friends is in the house of God. Amen, somebody. So many people are looking all over for friends and somebody to, to you know, People want to belong to a fellowship, amen? And they find their friends in, in, in some low places. And they may find themselves end up in, some, in the wrong places. But I want you to find friends who will not be ashamed to take you to Jesus Christ. And as a believer in Christ, uh, we don't have to hide what Jesus can do. So many of us are we, we, we're, we're embarrassed to tell our friends what Jesus can do. But I don't want you to be embarrassed today. I don't want you to be ashamed of Jesus Christ. In one place, the word says that if you're ashamed of him, one day he's going to be ashamed of you. So let's be the, the friends who can tell our friends in need. There's a man named Jesus who can take care of every burden in your life. We don't have to hide what Jesus can do. Let's find friends who can help us in life, who will take us to the right places. To the presence of 
presence of Jesus Christ. His friends took him. These people took him to Jesus. Proverbs 17 and 7 says, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. There are, there are times in your life when you need a friend, amen? You need a friend who will take you to Jesus Christ. The second thing I want to say in this text this morning is, follow Jesus where he leads. Follow Jesus where he leads. The text says in Mark chapter 8, verse 23, says, So, uh, the blind, so he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town, and when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Then he put his hands on his eyes again. Somebody say again. And made him look up. <laughs> Anybody want to look up today? And he was restored and saw everyone clear. I want you to know that you have to follow Jesus today. Because there are times in our lives when we feel like we have the, our own answers. I want to tell you today, we don't need to tell Jesus how to do it. As I was reading the text, and over and over again, I said, Lord, what are you trying to say by walking this man away from the crowd? Those, those same people who brought Jesus to him, Jesus walked away from them. And in my sanctified imagination, I began to feel like Jesus was getting ready to say, well, I don't need them to tell me how to heal this man. Because isn't that what goes, goes on in our lives? Sometimes we have a, a, a pre-planned solution in our hearts and our minds for how we think God ought to fix our problems. How he ought to bring us our healing. But I believe Jesus was saying in this text today that he didn't need their, their input. Anybody ever had a, 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 a backseat driver? Amen, somebody. Trying to tell you how to drive. Tell you how to get where you're going. But I want you to know today that it's important for us to understand that Jesus knows what he's doing. And he knows where he's going to take you and I. Amen. So I want you to be really willing to follow Jesus where he leads because he has something he want to do in your life and mine. He wants you to find your healing. And I want you to know today it may not be like you think it ought to be. And it may not go just the way you want it to go. Do you see what he did in the text? It, it's not, it, it wasn't the most, uh, uh, what word I want to use? It wasn't the most sanitary way, help me Holy Ghost, of, of, of healing somebody. The Bible says that, so he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of town, and when he had spit on his eyes, my Lord, and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And I want to say, you know, that, that, that doesn't sound very comfortable, amen? Doesn't it sound comfortable to do to anybody? It doesn't sound comfortable for anybody to do that unto you. But I want to ask you a question. What will, what will you do to be healed today? What are, you, what are you willing to do to be healed? Because I heard it, I heard it said in, in times that, you know, if you get sick enough, or you're hurt bad enough, help me, Holy Ghost, you'll do something to get better. You'll go to that doctor. You'll take that medicine that you said you would never take. Help me, Holy Ghost. So when we're following Jesus where he leads, we need to allow him to do what he needs to do in our lives. Because the time is going to come, we're going to be able to see, we're gonna say, well, Lord, you know, I need you to heal me. And we don't even have the answers ourselves, but we don't want to allow Jesus to be the given the answer that we really need. So we need to follow Jesus where he leads and allow him to do what he wants to do. So he spat on his eyes, touched him, <laughs> and he asked him a question. You know, he asked him, you know, can you see? Did you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. And see, that's, that, to me, that, that lends to the fact that sometimes we're in a place so long, it takes more than one touch. It takes more than one church service. It takes more than one prayer for us to receive the things that we need in life. And some people think that, well, if he didn't answer me the first time, then that's all, you know, maybe I can't get it. But you see that Jesus, he touched him again. And I want you to know that Jesus will touch you again. Whatever's going on in your life, whatever you feel uh, can't be fixed, Jesus has the healing for you. You just got to trust him again, amen? So many times we throw in a towel on Jesus and say, well, maybe, maybe he's not going not gonna to fix it for me. But I want you to trust God today. Wherever he leaves, whatever he asks 
ask you to do, be willing to follow him. To follow Jesus all the way. The old saints are the same, all the way from earth to glory. He's a mighty good leader. All the way. Luke, 20, Luke 9 and 23 lets us know how we got to follow him. Then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Whosoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world <laughs> and, lose, and himself is destroyed or lost? So we don't want to get lost trying to figure it out ourselves or, or make our own way, but let's follow Jesus where he leads. He knows what he's doing, amen? And even in this case, when he spat on his eyes and touched them, and he had to touch them again, he knew what he was doing. He pulled them away from the crowd. <laughs> and I want you to know that Jesus is still pulling people away from the crowd. He's still taking us out of the, out of the world, out of the world of sin into the world of righteousness. So let's follow Jesus where he leads. The third thing, the last thing I want to say this morning is finalize your healing with obedience. <laughs> finalize your healing with obedience. Look at the text, verse 26. It says, then he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell anyone in town. So, this man who was brought to him by other people, by friends, Jesus takes him apart, and he, he spat on his eyes and, and, and touched him and asked him, can you see? And he, he said, well, no, I can't see quite good enough yet. And he touched him again, and then he was able to see. And I believe that Jesus knows uh, how, how people can act, right? They will say, well, well how did you get healed? What did he do? Well, he did this and he did that. He did the other. Well, wow, why did he have to do all of that? Well, if, I, I, if I were you, I would go get a second opinion. Because sometimes people can get in their own way, amen, and try to steal your joy, steal the moment. But I want you to see today that Jesus said, uh, don't, don't go that way. Don't go into the town, but I want you to go straight to your own house <laughs> and don't tell anyone in the town. Don't even go back into the town. You go straight to your house. In other words, finalize your healing with obedience. In other words, don't put your trust in other people's opinions and their ideas about your life and the decisions you have to make. But put your trust in the Lord. Because we don't need to do, well, what we need to do is to do what Jesus tells us to do. What we need to do is what Jesus tells us to do. Because so many times we're worried about what other people are going to say. Help me, Holy Ghost. Even I sometimes worry about what people are going to say. But it's better to follow Jesus' plan for your life than to worry about what everybody else got to say. You know, everybody always has something else to say. No matter what's going on in your life. When you're doing good, what well, they think, well, well now you, 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 you think you, you, you're too good for everybody else. If things are going bad, well, then you must have done something wrong. It's always something that people have to say. But make sure you're doing what Jesus told you to do, amen? And when you're doing what Jesus told you to do, you can overcome the word. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 says, Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ <laughs> is born of God. And everyone who loves him, that's him again, who begat him also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. I'm talking about obedience today. For whatever is born of God, it gets kicked out. Help me, Holy Ghost. Is that what it says in your Bible? Whatever is born of God, it gets thrown away. Is that what it says in your Bible? No, the Bible says, for wherever is born of God, overcomes the world. <laughs> and this is the victory. Anybody want victory today? This is the victory that has overcome the world. It is our faith. So I want you to have faith today to believe that when you're doing what God told you to do, it might not look like it's going to work in the beginning. But you keep on obeying God, amen? Because you're going to finalize
recognize your healing because you have obeyed God. You did what God told you to do. That's how I want to have the good news experience today. That you can find your healing in Jesus Christ. You can find your victory in Jesus Christ. You will find out that you will overcome through Jesus Christ. And that's what the good news experience is all about. Overcoming the world. Overcoming our trials. Overcoming the circumstances that we face in life. So we can see Jesus for ourselves. Because one day we want to stand before him and hear him say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. Now I'm going to make you rule over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. I pray you've been blessed today as we stand together. The good news experience. Find your healing in Jesus. Today if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can know him. The simple as the ABC. The A admit that you Sin against God. To believe, to be believed that He died and rose again, that your sins and my sins could be forgiven, and to see confess Him as your Lord and Savior. Why don't you pray a simple prayer with me right now, Father? In the name of Jesus, we thank you today. I thank you for your Word and reminder that I need to accept you as my Savior and Lord. Boy, I admit that I have sinned against you, Lord, and I ask you to forgive me, Lord. I believe that you died and rose again, that my sins might be forgiven. And now, Lord, I confess you. I accept you as my Savior and Lord, and I confess you right now as my Lord and Savior. Lord, I thank you for saving me, Lord. Now, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Sanctify me and lead me in your way, in your way Lord. And I forever give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. You say, well, Pastor, I'm already saved, but, you know, I've been going through trials in this life. I need, I need healing. But today I want you to know you can find your healing in Jesus Christ. You can find it by having good friends who will order your steps toward Jesus and lead you to into, into his presence. You can follow Jesus where he leads today. He wants to lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Most of all, finalize your healing with obedience. Your obedience will make everything work out for you. It will enable you to overcome the things of this world. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless you today. We thank you, Lord, for this simple reminder in your word. We can find our healing in Jesus. Lord, even if you don't do it the way you did it for someone else, you can, we can find our healing in you. We pray your blessing upon this word today that it will accomplish what you're sending it out to accomplish today. That men and women, boys and girls, young and old, will find their healing in Jesus Christ. Now, Father, have your way in and through us. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and the praise. We ask it in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We thank God for those of you who join us on live today. May God bless you.